we're going to work today on the armature for the foot. Um, the foot form, actually, we're not going to do a foot per se. You can see the armature um, is set up for a heel and that it stands on its own. And this is because you're going to shape the wires that are left out for the foot into the shape of a heel. And this metal piece here will actually be to ground so that the foot is resting on that heel and on the front part of the foot. So this takes the load, uh, the weight of the entire doll on the the point here and the point here. So it actually helps to protect the um, the foot because that's actually, that wire is actually what the doll is standing on, even though the foot form is wrapped around it. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you this off the doll. We'll actually be sculpting it on the doll, um, but this is what it's going to ultimately look like with the heel, the metal part of the heel coming out here. And we will um, decorate that either with um, clay at some point or with um, foam or some other material to cover the, the actual metal part of the heel. And I usually also pad um, the bottom part of the foot, I'll, I'll take a piece of foam and pad this front section and I'll pad the actual tip of the heel. If it's a flat foot, if it's going to stand flat, then I actually pad the entire bottom of the foot with um, Creative Fun Foam. The stuff you get for little kids works perfectly. That way every time you sit the doll down, it, it isn't hitting the polymer clay it's actually being cushioned by the foam and it looks it gives you a perfect layer for the sole of the shoe okay so we're going to take this large block that we have here and to get it on the armature let me set this one aside bring the armature back in to actually get it on the armature, what we're going to do is take and cut it in half, starting, you want the front toe part of the shoe to be left intact. And you're going to open this up like that. And you're going to insert the shoe. And at this point, it really doesn't matter if you can see the wire on the bottom. The important part is to get it wrapped around the foot, or I should say wrapped around the, um, the armature and closed up again on the armature. And we're going to carve this down so that it looks like this. Let's get it all seamed together. And what you want to try to do is not obstruct this joint right here, this space right here. You want to try to keep the clay below this level. If you want to make an ankle boot, what's going to come above that level is the leather, not the clay. The clay stays down below this joint right here so that if you want to pose the doll and point the toe so that it's not sitting with its foot awkwardly sticking up because it doesn't bend, then you want to make sure that you're able to adjust it when you do that. And there's a way to make the, um, the leather shoe or boot so that it, it allows that to happen and we'll talk about that later. So what we have here as you can see is the bottom of the shoe. 
the shoe form, I should say. And we're gonna take and seam this closed here and seam this closed here. Oops. Just seam it in. And you can take a little piece of clay, your scrap clay, which is never really scrap. There's always a use for it. I just now we're going to push this back a little, make sure it's not getting too far up into the joint. I'm going to carve around it a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. Now you're going to reduce the size of this and we're going to start on the front here. You're going to pick your shape and on this on this we're going to create the insole instep rather so we're going to cut a piece out from in there one more piece of scrap and then we're going to come up the top and down the side in one motion Okay. Carve around front on the shoe because we want it to be a pointy witch shoe. And be mindful of the overall length <clears throat> and the height. So we want this height, this um, top bony part of the the foot where it goes up into the ankle but we don't want above the toes to be too high so I'm going to take and reduce here then arch the blade so it comes uphill Can you see that Oops. The start there and then I have to do it this way and then again on this side and we'll be cutting some off the bottom here and arching it up to the arching the foot up so we have more of a heel visible and I just keep cutting away until I get the shape that I like this piece here away take that piece there away getting closer starting to resemble a shoe okay again we're standing on the heel the metal heel but when you're shaping the shoe you want to make sure that you are keeping the toe to the ground and that you don't go too too big or too small with your cuts um, uh, I said that wrong you don't go too big with the cut so you make the shoe too small not that you can't add but if you want a good strong shoe then you don't want um, seams in the middle if you can help it. All one piece seems to work the best as far as keeping the shoe very durable. Okay, the back of the shoe we're going to also want to shape as you can see here the back of the shoe is I'm gonna say my post would otherwise be coming out right about there so we're going to want to mimic that shape on this heel 
and that's going to require an angle alright and then take and round my you want to make sure that you have the wires well covered inside of your heel and on this one it looks like I may have to intervene let me see that's got the heel of the foot way too big. Okay, so you can start, you're starting to see it's looking more like a shoe. You want to make sure that it also is shaped like a high heeled shoe and that the wire is at the bottom edge of this shoe. It doesn't really matter that much if it actually shows. Um, what's most important is that it's touching the floor um, because what ultimately is going to happen is the shoe will have a padded base, like I mentioned before, that will protect the, um, protect the clay. So it won't actually be the clay that is on the ground. You know, it's best if you don't over carve, but as I was cutting on the side that was further away from me, this is going to require a little piece on the in uh, instep side of the shoe. Normally I am not focusing on what the camera is focusing on. I'm paying attention to the sculpting I'm doing. And I don't have to add anything. Now, this can be sculpted into the shoe. You can sculpt your boot right on the armature um, <clears throat> completely. Add all your little details, whatever it is that you want. Laces, buttons, any of that. Um, for this video I am doing the foot form which I use frequently when I do a leather shoe. So you just want to build it up where normally your shoe would bow out where your bones make the shoe need to be wider, wider on the inside because of the big toe that type of thing. Alright. And this most important part of this, again, the foot form, is making sure you have not buried the joint and that it is going to be able to move. So if you have any hard clay butted up against it, you want to get it out of there now so that <clears throat> there is room to reposition your ankle and your shoe later on. And you can, I mean, I opted for a small heel. Um, you can extend this wire and arch this foot as extreme as you want. I mean, that's entirely up to you. Um, I prefer not to use doll stands on my dolls. Um, at least I have, you know, developed that. I don't like to have to use a doll stand. I like them to be able to stand on their own. So I don't do super high heels like this anymore. And I do like to have the armature wire come all the way to the floor 
for that reason because this is not clay hitting the ground. This is the armature touching the ground. And once it's padded, it's, as you can see, every time, pick it up, sit it down, pick it up, sit it down, every time this doll stands, no problem. She's, she's not loose or wobbly or anything. That's the beauty of this armature and the way that I do it all the way down to the toes. And you can sculpt a bare foot on here. And the armature is actually less complicated when you do a bare foot because you don't have to do the heel bending or any of that. You just have a flat clay foot. Um, on that, you do have to pad... Um, the bottom of the wire with clay to sculpt the toes and you would typically stop the wire a little further back so that um, it it ends at the uh, what is that the ball the pad of the foot the ball and the pad it would end here and not actually go up into the toe section so that's one shoe form mostly done um, I'm probably going to fine tune it a little bit. And for you, that means you will have to practice. <laughs> you will have to practice a little bit, figuring out what shape shoe you're going to want. Um, typically with the, sh the feet, the, um, the foot is slightly bigger than your head. Um, with a doll that stands on its own, you can even go a little bit bigger if only just to give it extra stability but typically the um say if your head is eight and a half inches your foot's going to be nine and a half inches and some people have much bigger feet and some people have smaller feet so there's really no hard and fast rule but when you're trying to make your doll stand as i'm doing here you want to um give it a good size foot I'm going to flatten this one out so you can see this is um, more or less the same size. This one actually is a little bit bigger because the wire was bigger, but I made this one without really sizing it to the doll just to, as a display to show you what your foot form is ultimately going to look like. It's typ typical of the foot with the exception that there is no toe and it, it's going to have a um, more of a shoe shape to it than a foot shape. So that's that's that for now and you're going to do the other foot obviously and then go ahead and get this baked and you'll um, build the shoe on it. You can cover your heel now. This one's probably going to have a um, a little uh, wedgy type heel to cover that but that's the foot form hope you enjoyed it next up will be the um, the hand okay so now I have both feet roughed in the shape of the shoe is pretty much established. You're going to notice that this is very thin. This is the part of the shoe that is below or rather above the, um, the sole. The sole is going to get added and you can add one or two layers, a thin layer or a thick layer, but that's going to be the um, cushioning part. The, uh, the foam will go below that. So that's why you're going to stop just a little short of it actually being thick. And we can add some clay at this point if we want to to the heel. And you can decide how big a heel you want, if you want to make it a theme. A lot of times, to keep the toes off the ground, we're going to rest the armature on something. And that way it's not actually touching the table. Oops. Let me 
cover up my keyboard again. There we go. Okay, so you're going to take your clay and come behind the heel and wrap around it. I'm going to add a little more or just shape it. Now I'm going to add more. A little more because I want it to have a good size chunky heel. That's about right. Okay, so we're going to start to seam this heel into, into the shoe. And I'm keeping it as best I can in front of the camera. Normally I would have this in my hand while I'm working on it. And I'm going to do a flat front kind of a cowgirl heel, how it has a flat front and then a rounded back. And keep an eye because you're, now you can bake this first. Um, just make sure that when you go back and add the heel um, that you actually put it in the oven again and cure the whole heel again. I actually cured it with a heat gun once and forgot to uh, go back and put it in the oven so that it baked all the way through and that heel ultimately cracked and that was a real pain because the whole doll was assembled at that point. Actually assembled and in the new owner's home. Not a good thing. But a repair was made and it was okay. So this is there we go. Nice chunky cowgirl style heel. Which works even on a witch. And again you want to go back to the floor, make sure that you are, you have a nice level shoe so it stands. Because if she doesn't stand, she doesn't stand. And we want her to stand. So we actually, she stands. Okay, so finally, in the end, what you want to make sure of is that both heels are touching the ground and the doll is standing in a pose that looks natural and attractive since this is going to be a female which I have achieved there. This fella is another doll that I made previously that has this type of armature and I'm going to show you his boots real quick. You can see the foam bottom and the boot itself, like, like that one, the shoe form stops right here. You can actually see where the leather puckers at that line. And his ankle bends so that his toe can point. You can see this is, this is the flat one. That's the pointed one. It can bend up the way that a human foot can bend, obviously not too much in the wrong direction, but the, um, the leather is cut in a way that it actually folds over under into this area here so that when the shoe moves, um, the leather actually stretches out from in this pocket and maintains that the top of the foot is covered. And it um, has that, like I said, that foam bottom. 
and he stands every time with very little problem. And that is my armature. And my little elf would like to say very nicely, thank you very much for viewing our video. I just wanted to show you real quick. This is the uh, pattern that is used to make the boot that I just showed you. It's very simple. This is the piece that will become the front part of the boot as I showed you. Then this section back here ends up covering the rising part of the boot and the way that it works you cut this all in one piece you cut the center area you divide it so that you have this small area in the front which this becomes the tongue of the shoe the sides fold in on themselves like this and then when you wrap this around the shoe and this becomes the top part of the shoe here's your tongue and the shoe wraps itself like that and it becomes your entire boot riser now you're going to want to stitch up the back where it wraps around let me see if i can get it to go around hard to do with a piece of paper um, okay and it wraps around the foot so you just do a real quick stitch on the back going down the back of the boot okay and then the front part pulls itself in tight around the foot you've got the tongue which ends up being trimmed and all of this can be adjusted so if you're going on a much smaller foot obviously you would cut this down you're going to glue this portion of the foot to your of the shoe rather to your foot form and depending on the size of your foot form you can then go and trim off the excess or go ahead and make this a smaller pattern to begin with I don't I don't actually have a foot to cover right now I just wanted to show you and then with this being the tongue you then just poke your holes going up the leather front and you're going to use the um, you can use embroidery thread or any kind of material you want to lace up the front of the boot and you have the ability that when like I said when you point the toe of the shoe that extra little bit of, of material that you have there actually I'll show you how it moves which you don't notice it when it's all the same color but when you point the toe it has the ability to stretch forward and then retract back so that the foot can give without worrying about ripping your stitches or anything like that or without exposing the um, the interior of the foot structure so again that was that was the pattern that I used and only this section here and the little bit back here where it wraps around the back of the heel only those areas are actually glued down the inside part of the flap here I don't glue just along the bottom of the foot and along the whole front and then you can trim it down or you can um, take a razor a sharper sharper tool than this one this one's loose I use it for sculpting or a dull that I use for sculpting but you can shave the edge of the leather just shave it real real fine the sharper the blade the better for this but at an angle just shave that so it's super thin and then you can actually wrap it around the underside of the foot form and glue it underneath cut yourself a little piece of the foam material or another piece of leather to kind of fill in 
in between where you glued it on and then put your sole of the shoe on the foot and you've you've got a gorgeous boot that is actually functional so that you can use the feet to stabilize the doll so even if you bend one leg change her pose if you want to have her kneeling with one leg up you can point that toe behind her so that the foot is out the way that it would be naturally and the other foot can again be stabilized to help her hold that pose. That um, is one of the reasons why I love that armature. The video for the armature itself is uh, still a work in progress. I had a section that I thought I recorded but I didn't so I actually have to redo parts of the video but that will be coming sooner or later. But in the meantime if you wanted to give this a try it's a very simple way to make a boot on a doll that has a poseable ankle. And having the ankle poseable really adds some versatility to the, uh, to the doll.